In 2018, when we first heard about Elizabeth and decided that we'd do some fundraising, it was for a small plaque or a, a notice board or something like that to go in the town centre that would just tell people that Elizabeth lived here. But the more we learned about Elizabeth, the more we began to understand how radical she was, how important she was, the work she did and the difference it has made to the lives of women uh, from that time, we thought perhaps we'd get a small statue. And then in May of 2018, the first woman statue was erected in Parliament Square. It was Millicent Fawcett, who was a contemporary of Elizabeth. And around the plinth of the statue is featured photographs of the most influential women of the suffragist movement. And right under her right foot is our Elizabeth. When we learned this, we were so excited and we realised even more how important she was and that it was being recognised that she was. And we thought if she's being recognised and commemorated in London, she surely needs to be commemorated properly here in Congleton, the town that she lived for 54 years. And then we heard about the R. Emmeline campaign in uh, Manchester and the beautiful statue that was being made there. And I contacted a wonderful woman called Hazel Reeves. And Hazel is the sculptor that made that beautiful piece of work. And we are very lucky that we have got Hazel here with us today. I'm going to go over to her now. Hello, Hazel. Hi, it's Susan. It's lovely to see your smiley face again. <laughs> uh, I wonder, could you tell us a little bit about um, the process of making a statue and maybe a little bit about our, the R. Emmeline project? Yeah, well, I suppose this, the process of making a statue, for me, it's all about storytelling and how you can tell a story in bronze. Mm -hmm. So, for me, it's identifying what I want to communicate and then trying different ways that I might do that with a figure, person, um, something like um, Emily Pankhurst. And that's where it grows from, trying to tell that story and thinking about what impact I want to have. So I know that for me, there's no point in having a statue that's just gonna sit there. If I think back, I never noticed statues until I became a sculptor because they didn't speak to me. I never saw myself reflected, reflected back. So it's really important that you think about who you can reach. And I think sculpture should be a catalyst. And it's about moving people. It's about uh, moving them to tears or to action or to um, you know, radical change. It's about it being a catalyst. And so once I work out the story I want to tell, and I tend to work with a little maquette in a material, could be something soft, a bit like plasticine, and I try out different moves and I work with a model. So I'm very much about the relationship I have with the model and how we together can sort of choreograph the piece so that it works from every single angle. So something like Emily Pankhurst, you're going to see her 360 degrees in the round. And so every, every point, if you're standing around that circle, you have to have something interesting um, to see. So that becomes a small little model. And usually there's a client and they can give their feedback on that sort of model. And then you take it into the process of actually going from something this size to something this size. And... <laughs> My studio is here, you can't see it, but it's incredibly high ceiling because, you know, I often do lot, really large pieces and you have to scale up from the small maquette up to the full size piece. And it was a joy when the um, women councillors of Manchester came to my studio along with some of the women that run the Safe Spots domestic abuse charity. And they came here to see her in process. And it was a real joy for me because I tend to be in the studio on my own or maybe with a model, but to actually have people that are really invested in the project from the start and we continue to be invested right up until the unveiling, which, as you know, you know, there are up to 6,000 people there, I don't know, 1,000 kids chanting 
And so you know that actually having a process that's very much about engaging with the public from the start right to the end is going to be really important. And I'm so pleased you got, um, you'll have Andrew Simcock talking about the process because, you know, actually asking Mancunians, well, which woman of Manchester do you want to commemorate in bronze? And so people had a, you know, real vested interest from the start. And of course, overwhelmingly, it was Emmeline that they, that they wanted. Uh, but that's not to say there aren't these incredible Mancunian women. So now they have their, their book, um, which actually tells you the story of not just Emmeline, but all the other women that didn't make it to the bronze yet. <laughs> yet indeed keep watching this space because we are working towards getting our statue unveiled on international women's day 2022 international women's day is march the 8th and 2022 is a very important year for congleton it's our 750th anniversary of the charter so there's going to be lots of stuff going on all the way through the year and we're hoping that our statue unveiling on March the 8th we'll be kicking everything off for all the other things that's going ahead. We are planning for that day, we're already planning our unveiling, we've got the wonderful Baroness Hale has agreed to come and cut our ribbons so that's really really good. Can I just ask you before you go, why do you think it's important that we get a bronze statue? Um, well you need something which is permanent not sort of ephemeral and bronze is a precious metal it's durable it's robust so it's it, in some ways it's quite practical but actually because of the value of the metal if you have someone commemorated in bronze it elevates them in some way in terms of status and as we know, so few women have been celebrated in bronze. And it really is an injustice mm -hmm. you know, not to have had a statue of Emily Pankhurst in the city of her birth, not to have a statue of Elizabeth in her, you know, in her, you know, the, the town that she uses her own. So it's really important that we actually celebrate these lives, but also these statues acting as a catalyst so it's also saying to people that um, women have done incredible things. You as a woman, you as a girl can do incredible things. And that is about having a role model and literally having a role model on the streets for young girls. I think it's so important in terms of developing their ambitions, developing their self belief. So it is a matter of justice. It's about challenging gender stereotypes. So having these role models so girls can actually see, yeah, I can be like that. Mm -hmm. You know, Elizabeth was tiny. Mm -hmm. She did incredible things, you know, 50 years working for women's suffrage. You think about all the causes that she championed and the legislation she brought in is incredible. Why haven't we heard a story so far? So it's about redressing, redressing that balance and having something that we can go to a statue where you can, our Congleton can go to and celebrate her life, but celebrate all women's life and appreciate contributions to, to society. So I think statues, are, of course, are only one entry point in bringing about change and bringing about equality. But I think it's, it's a quite a symbolic one for us all. Thank you, Hazel. Thank you for your time. We do appreciate it. And can we just say that Elizabeth Group thinks that our Emmeline is an absolutely beautiful statue. Your work is amazing. Thank you. <laughs>